All right, we start out here um, measuring the overall width of the shell. And we have the actual keyboard that's going to go in the shell there for reference, um, just to get our just to get our width. And uh, here, this is called hardboard. Uh, you can pick it up at any big box store, but it's very flexible and very pliable. And so this strip that I'm cutting here is actually going to be the piece that uh, vertically sits in the curve of the piano. And uh, we're actually going to use this piece to uh, trace out the curvature that we want. This is a temporary brace that I'm installing just to give us something to clamp our piece of hardboard to. Um, we'll use this to, we'll actually use the piece of hardboard to um, draw out our curve. And you can see I'm clamping it here just to that temporary brace. And, uh, we'll switch angles here in a second and you can kind of get a better idea of what I'm talking about. But we are using the piece itself to draw out our curve. You can kind of see here where we're going with this. You can kind of see the the shape of the piano. And um, here we've got our line drawn, and I'm just taking just taking big bites out of the uh, of the excess with the circular saw. This is by no means a precision job at this point. Just trying to get it down to a more manageable size. And then we will uh, we'll fine tune it, sort of get inch our way up to that line with, a, with something else. I had a, a brief thought that maybe I would try and cut it right to the line and the curve with the circular saw, but if you've ever used a circular saw, you'll know that it doesn't like to uh, curve. <laughs> This is sort of what we came up with to sort of fine sand down to our line, our, our drawn line. Uh, I did not have a belt sander on hand, which probably would have been better, uh, but this worked pretty well. It's just an angle grinder with a sanding disc on it. And um, you can see how I'm just working my way into our line there. Sorry for the soft focus there, but you can see what I'm talking about. This worked pretty well. And that's the top of our piano. We're just using it as a uh, as a reference for the bottom part of our piano. And those are braces that we are putting in. And this will actually take the uh, it, this will accept the curved piece of hardboard. And you'll see in a second. I'm going to make a bunch of the a bunch of little tiny braces that go all the way around that curve using the pocket hole jig there. To make sure that that MDF isn't going anywhere as long as well as the uh, as the wood glue, you can see my tiny little braces that I I figured this was the best way to do this. Um, this part of the piano is not going to ever be seen, uh, so you'll see it's kind of rough uh, rough work inside the piano, but that's okay because that will never will never be seen. I just wanted to make sure that this was stable enough to accept that curved piece of hardboard that goes around them. And just using air nails, uh, pin nails, and glue to hold it all together. And it worked well. I was uh, pretty pleased up to this point of how it was turning out. You can sort of see how it's taking shape here. Uh, and it came together quite nicely. As luck would have it, the uh, the brad nails that I had in my nail gun there were just a little bit too long. You could probably see them shooting through the back of that MDF just a little bit, and of course I did manage to shoot one into my finger at one point, which was super fun. Didn't catch that on video. You can see the glue there on that hardboard. It's kind of messy, but again, this is all going to be covered up. You'll never see this, especially when the, the keyboard is in place. Here's the top. We've got it um, 
starting to assemble it now, but I'm just routing, uh, just rounding over the corners of the top with the router, give it a nice decorative look. And uh, we are now going to attach it permanently. I, we are we are attaching this lid permanently. Uh, did not put a hinge on it. It's not never going to be a reason to open this piano um, since it is just a shell. Uh, so we, we decided to just permanently attach this lid using uh, using wood glue and pin nails, which you'll see in a second. Um, it was pretty sturdy. I uh, wouldn't say that it would stand up to a drop test, but these are just prototypes. Uh, we had to make these for a specific gig, and... Uh, we just kind of wanted to see if we could make our own. Um, we learned a lot. I learned a lot in the building of, the, of, of these. A lot of things that I uh, won't do next time. And a lot of things that I thought worked out pretty well. You'll see in a minute some of the things that I will not do again. But here I'm just tracing around to uh, make sure I know where those braces are. So that I can shoot the the pin nails into them and I'm basically just using the pin nails to hold it down for the time being that wood glue is going to do all the work this is how we decided to get our the curve of our corner here um, little decorative piece kind of give that piano the, the real piano look just straighten out that corner right there and here's one of the mistakes I made. I decided to do, to cut this piece with a jigsaw. Um, the mistake that I made was that I, we attached the lid first. And two things, you can see that the plate of that jigsaw is not gonna want to go any further. And so I had to just take big bites out of it. Eventually I got it. Now here I'm, I'm making the legs or what will be the legs, and I'm just cutting the, uh, the bull nose off of some 2x4s. And uh, I'm actually going to put all of these 2x4s together, uh, put, put two together a piece to make a basically a 4x4 a four four leg, which I'll then, uh, then shape. I came up with a tapering jig for these, which is very, very dangerous. You'll see what I mean in a minute. You're just putting these uh, these legs together, but I, I I came up with a tapering jig to to allow for a taper for the for the legs, but it's a very very sketchy way to do it, and uh, probably won't be doing that again. I, I probably will make a a more substantial jig uh, to work with. But here, just assembling these these legs, gluing them up, getting them ready to to shape and I just used some um, some pocket screws I didn't have a whole lot of clamps on hand and these pocket screw holes will be filled but I just used some of those Craig pocket, uh, pocket hole screws to act as a clamp to hold those together while the glue dried I'll take a second now to explain um, my tapering jig as you're going to see it here in a second and I don't have a whole lot of footage of it um, but it is just a 2x4 with a another block of wood screwed onto the back of the 2x4 extending out from it uh, with a screw in front of that piece and that screw is adjustable and you just you just use it to put an angle on the piece that you're cutting but it's very dangerous as you can see and I and I will not do it uh, that way again um, and I wouldn't recommend that anyone else do it either but it did give us uh, the results we were looking for here we're just slapping a couple of coats of white on these pianos I think we used two about two coats um, a piece uh, and the paint had primer in it so uh, two coats is pretty much all it needed high gloss white uh, and it turned out pretty good. Attaching the legs now with some foldable hinges that I found on Amazon. 
These were about, I think, 20 bucks for a pair, so not too bad, and they um, were sturdy enough. It's not the sturdiest thing in the world, as these do fold, um, and they have to fold for transport, but they worked well. I was, I was pretty pleased with the way that they turned out. All right, just some beauty shots of the finished product, and we are pleased with how they, how they came out. These are prototypes, so there are some mistakes that, that we won't be making again. This was a learning process, but all in all, pretty happy with the way that these look and the way that they work. Thanks for watching.